Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, and joined by my lovely and talented wife, Miss Southern Shell, as usual. And Tyler's out today, so we got Miss Ireland on the boards. First time in the podcast. Hey. <laughs> What's going on today, Shell? Another exciting week. It's a rainy, rainy day today. Man, I am so, it seems like all I talk about is the day I'm rain. I'm so sick of rain. <laughs> I feel like that. Another month we'll be like, it's so dry and hot. But now it's just like rain every day. Can't get anything done. We did get a video in this week. Yeah. Before the rain started. Yeah. So that'll release next week on YouTube. It's a uh, lemon pepper steppers. Lemon, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> lemon pepper steppers. Yeah. No, I did. Um, and I had that on my list to talk about before at the end of the show, but I'll go ahead and mention it real quick. It's, it's we'll talk about it. Lemon next pepper week. chicken, chicken leg quarters. Just grilled. Good old, hey. You cannot beat grilled chicken, it's especially like, dark meat chicken. Man, I, I'll tell you, leg quarters were meant for the barbecue grill. <laughs> for real. Weber, yeah. Weber kettle, I used a Vortex. Seasoned them up, nothing crazy. Got a nice little crispy skin on the outside of them and then drizzled a little bit of white barbecue sauce over them. Those are some tasty, that's some tasty barbecue chicken. Yeah. Or grilled chicken, whatever you want to call it. I love the white barbecue sauce on some crispy grilled chicken. Man. The skin good. gets just right on them. The vortex works some magic. It's a good little tool. It is. Um, so what do you like better, the vortex ch- cooking chicken or the pellet grill at a high temp cooking chicken? Oh, that's tough because you do get a better flavor. I think so too. On the Weber with the charcoal in yep. there and the high heat, but you get a perfect the pellet grill. Flavor. Gets the skin even at high temperatures. I think you get a better looking skin. Appearance wise, and you can get that crispiness on the pellet grill too by cranking those temps up. Yeah. So but is it is that... it true crispiness like a breaded chicken? No, but if you dry the chicken skin really well, like a paper towel dry it and let it sit and air dry, then you put a, a light oil on it and then put your seasonings on it. It does something to it to where it just makes it get. It's definitely bite through. It definitely has a slight crisp to it. Do you do 300 on the pellet? No, I do 400. Oh, 400. I crank it up. Even for 400 wings? about an hour. Yeah, I always cook wings at 400 on I've there. been cooking them at 350. Maybe that's oh. why mine aren't getting so Yeah, no, 400. That's the trick. If you hadn't had some 400 degree chicken wings on a pellet grill, I mean, you got to try them. The whole wings, too. Yeah. Um, to where it's got more skin on it. And those you take cut about them, 45 minutes to an hour. That's one hour, five minutes is my magic number on whole wings. I got it down. <laughs> One hour, five minutes, they're going to be bones popping out, crispy skin, and juicy chicken, not dry. But No sauce. You can toss them in the sauce just like you did, would a, a fried chicken wing. Yeah, that's what I like to end. do. Yeah, I don't, put it, I don't put the sauce on them and put them back on or any of that. It's pretty much just like oil. Like I use either duck fat spray or a light like peanut oil or canola oil or something like that, and then it's AP seasoning. That's all I put on them. When and I'm not doing. a heavy AP. No, no, because really I'm just wanting the chicken done. Then I'm using my sauce, whatever sauce I want to toss it in, because I like them. It's like hot wing joint style. That's, they all that's come off the so same, good. and then you yeah. toss them. Yeah. Yep. But you, you don't can't get that charcoal flavor. But you don't get the charcoal flavor, and that's what the Vortex does. Yeah. So you're basically doing the same kind of cook, because that Vortex, I mean, it pegs the dial out. I don't know what – I've never checked it at, like, great level. Yeah, yeah. Right over that Vortex, probably. <laughs> I don't know. Seven, eight hundred degrees. Uh, when I was filming over it, can't get too close to it, can you? I made that mistake of reaching across it and trying to turn something, or yeah, it's hot. I was trying to take a picture and I didn't realize I was getting in close. And I, yeah, Ooh. you jump back real oh, yeah. quick. No, you do. They get you back, but it'll brown the skin too. Like the pellet grill doesn't do as good a job as like causing it to get like grilled look. You don't yeah. get that darkness. You get a really pretty skin, and your seasoning shows, and it browns it with the oil. But that vortex will get it to start turning dark, where it really gets some color to it. Yeah, I like I like that too. Yeah. When I you, didn't even flip those quarters. You just put them on there, let yeah, it cook. Just let them roll. Um, we'll you, talk about them next week when the video releases. When you grilled that chicken this week for dinner, because you did some grilled chicken for dinner. Yeah, I, I didn't even put that on my list to talk about, but I was out there a little meal prep. So, how did you grill those chickens? So I had. A pack of chicken breasts. There was like three boneless, skinless chicken breasts. But now you buy them at the grocery store. They're so big. 
I split them. So I kind of, I guess you call it an airline breast. It's like a cut down. I cut it like horizontally yeah. to where it creates a bottom half and a top half. Just like you're going to butterfly, keep, just take it take it apart. Okay, that's what I was going to So gonna the ask. tenderloin stays with kind of like the lower part and the top part's like that little perfect airline chicken breast. Probably about four or five ounces if I had to guess. I don't Why know do they call it an airline chicken breast? I think breast. it's just the cut, the style. Yeah. It's just a neat little... Airline chicken breast. I don't know why they can. Maybe they just serve it on airplanes. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but that was your serving. So, yeah. yeah. So I split those. So I took those three chicken breasts and turned it into six portions and I marinated it. And um, basically, it was like a Greek seasoning that I've been working on and um, a little bit of Greek salad dressing, like almost like a Greek vinaigrette. And I just poured that in a Ziploc bag, seasoned them up real good, and let them hang out like for a couple hours in the refrigerator. Um, I also did some boneless, skinless chicken thighs, like one pack. I think it has, what, six of those in there. Mm-hmm. And I did those kind of, um, I didn't have a marinade or anything. Did you trim those or cut those any? Man, I didn't. Like, I mean, sometimes they have extra fat and stuff on them, and I knew that I was fitting to burn some chicken. So I wanted to, <laughs> that's what I call it, burning chicken, when yeah. I just got a hot grill, and you just and I sit there with it and leave the lid off and just turn and turn and turn until it gets nice charry on the outsides. And that's what I did. So for that marinade, I just used Worcestershire soy sauce, a little olive oil, put some gringo in there, a little hot sauce. I just let you those hang Mexican out. Yeah, kind of, kind of. You needed that Daddy Hinkles. I, 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 I wish, I, I, wish I would have had that Baja marinade that Kroger has. Yeah. I really I think it's a Lowry's Baja marinade. It's great on chicken. But uh, I didn't, so I just did those with like Worcestershire and soy. Just a traditional kind of marinade. And it was really good on thighs because I did season them. Like when I took them out of the marinade, I kind of patted them off because you don't need all that moisture on them. And I seasoned them really well with the Grande Gringo because we were, I was doing, my take on those was chicken thigh Monterey. And it's, you have probably seen me do that recipe. I, I don't know, did I do a YouTube video on yeah, it? Yeah, uh, but you used. But I used chicken breast. Yeah, yeah. It's a. It's a play on, I don't know if that's a Chili's dish or what, but the old, you know, Chili's maybe yeah, bar and grill or it was whatever. the best uh, dish on their menu. It came with corn and I think mashed potatoes Yeah, is it what it came with. Mashed with. Potatoes. We yeah. were talking about that the other night. I what it like, came with. Was it rice? Was it? So I did, instead of trying to keep the carbs down, I did do corn on the cob, but I also did black beans. Uh, did uh, But I did, I marinated those thighs, took them out, seasoned them with gringo, I got my Weber grill, like one chimney of charcoal, hot, scattered it out, put the grate on, sprayed it a little bit. And I started the breast first because they usually take longer. And I just, one side of the Weber was white meat, one side was dark meat. So I just started, like I sat there. And there was a, two different flavors. You had a Yeah, I had a Greek flavor. going on the breast and I had a kind of a Southwestern going on the chicken. And I just flip them. Like I'd go a couple minutes, flip everything over, a couple minutes, flip everything over, have me a handy little thermal pen. When the breast got to about 160, I pulled it off so it stayed juicy and just set them to the side. Took the thighs off when they got about 170. I mean, really, those thighs are forgiven. You can do them at whatever. But I knew I was going to cook them a little bit more because once I got them all to 170, I put them on um, just an aluminum pan, brushed them with barbecue sauce. You can use whatever barbecue sauce you want. Um, I think I had some Townsend's that Shane and Lawson would give me, and I just – it was open, so I just, you know, coated them really good, covered them with cheese. And while I did, I forgot forgot to tell you, when I was when I, before I grilled them, I put some bacon in the oven, and you pulled that out for me. And so I just took that bacon and roughly chopped it, put it over the cheese. I used, like, mozzarella and a jack blend. Whatever we had. Whatever we had in the drawer. <laughs> this was super simple. Yeah. And covered them in cheese and put that bacon on them and slid that pan in the oven. Um, it might have went... It was it was on broil, so it wasn't long. I Couldn't watched it on more than two minutes. Just long enough to melt the yeah. cheese and get them hot and bubbly. So you're not cooking the chicken a whole lot, but if you take it to 170, it's going to carry over, and then on top under that broiler, it's still heating it up, and the thigh is thin anyway. So once that got all melted, just served it with a little bit of sliced green onion over the top. It was really good. With the black beans that I added pico and a little salsa to, a little gringo. Those are just straight out of the, the black can. beans were really, really good. The trick to those is drain them. Drain them. I had just a t- this is what I do. Yeah. Black beans. I drain them. I had just like a tablespoon of butter or half a tablespoon of butter. I did put. I st- yeah, I put some butter in there first. Yeah, and got just it to have it in the yeah. pan to keep the beans from sticking as bad because I because I drain the beans. And then I add pico, like and let that kind of saute. Mm-hmm. 
I didn't do that. I just added and some gringo a couple and some tablespoons of it. I didn't measure it, but and I just let them go on low until they're hot and bubbly and cook down a little bit. But when I plate them up, I top them with like finely shredded Italian blend cheese because it was in the drawer, <laughs> <laughs> and I put a little sli- green, a little uh, green onion over that. Man, that was a good side dish. Yeah, it was. And the corn just straight up bulk corn. Michael ate all that anyway. I'll tell you the trick to corn. I learned this. I think it was on a website. Like a, I, somebody from Iowa posted it, and I figured if they're from Iowa, they probably grew up. <laughs> they corn, knew a little something, a little about, something corn. about corn. But you bring up about a half. You know your. Your wife's spaghetti pot. <laughs> Everybody's got one. <laughs> about half water. You get it boiling. You put a little bit of salt in it, a little bit of sugar in it. When I'm talking a little bit, it's probably a teaspoon of each. Like a pinch? Yeah. No, a little more than a pinch. You know, measure out some. Measure you out some. I just put it in my hand. Two or three pinches. Sugar and salt, and then a couple splashes of white vinegar. Now, you don't know the white vinegar's in there, but it does something to those kernels of the corn. So you bring that to a boil. And then you shuck your corn, pull all the silt off. You put the corn on the cob in the water, and you turn it off the heat, and you cover that pan. And it needs to go about 10 minutes is all. And it will be the snappiest, like every little kernel is bursting with flavor, kind of pops when you bite into it. You get a touch, of, and this will turn regular old corn that you'll think is the most high-grade, <laughs> tri-color sweet corn you've ever had. And just that pinch of sugar and the salt. I mean, you don't need anything. I mean, if you put butter on it if you want to, but you don't have to. Michael tore it up. Yeah. Like he was getting, he loves e- corn in the yeah, he was getting everything. I didn't even eat one. <laughs> I was trying to watch the carbs. And then for the Greek chicken breast. So with that. We use those for lunch. <clears throat> use them for lunch wraps. I got some, I got some left over to go with the salad. So we got several meals out of this, really. Um, I just took those and sliced them up almost, would you say fajita style? Like you're going to make fajitas yeah. with a cooked chicken? Yeah. I just let them cool, chopped them up uh, that night. So that way you can make sandwiches, you can add it to yeah, salad. you can do whatever. Wrap, and, and I whatever. put it in a Ziploc bag and I used, you just know. Just reach in there with your fingers and have a few bites. Yeah. <laughs> but you had bought some some big wraps. I don't know which ones they were. I did um, a little bit of mayo, some fresh spinach, some uh, one slice of pepper jack cheese. Um, some roasted red pepper strips, and then I had some extra bacon, so I put some of the chicken down, and I put <laughs> some bacon down, and I made uh, bacon. It was it was chicken bacon ranch wraps, basically, is what it was, and they were dang good. Where the ranch come from? Well, that's what I called them. I, I should have put ranch. I, I guess you dip it in ranch. Yeah, you can. If I had it to do over, I told you I would have made you some fresh, like your ranch dressing. Like the dipping yeah, ranch, yeah. and then spread that on the shell first, and then built everything. I just roll those up and slice them and then put them in like a little plastic container. We got two lunches. Um, so, yeah, meal prepping, man. <laughs> <laughs> it does make things easier during the You don't have to worry day. about ordering lunch. Yeah. Fix it. Go have me a wrap after we wrap up this <laughs> podcast. Watch. So, South Haven, South Haven Spring Fest is this weekend. It is. It is. That's a, Mark's Which, been working hard this week on it. Yeah. We are. Uh, Mark's cooking it. Yeah, he's going. He's going. Oh, where are we going this weekend? We're going to Metairie, Louisiana. If you're down in Metairie, you need to come to this crawfish festival. I got asked to be a judge in it. I've never judged a crawfish festival. It's going to be my first one. Um, it is called what's it called? The uh, I'm pulling it up. Shell's now. pulling it up. But anyway, they have a ton of crawfish. It's festivals. The old Metairie Crawfish Festival and Cook Cook Off. At St. Catherine's of Siena Men's Club. So it's going to be at St. Catherine's Church, I'm thinking? I, I'm thinking it's, it's kind of going to be, you know, all out in the town. Oh, is All it? around the block, yeah. Okay. They're I think they have, they've got 40 the teams line. going to cook crawfish. They're doing a people's choice. I think you have to buy tickets to this. Once you buy tickets, you get to eat all the crawfish you want. And jambalaya. And jambalaya. I didn't know they were doing jambalaya, too. Yeah. That ain't part of the contest. I don't think so. They have a kid's zone. They're, they'll have vendors there selling yeah. concessions, too. So if you don't like crawfish, I'm sure they'll have something that you can get. Well, you can eat jumble off if you don't like crawfish. Yeah. Maybe that's why they do that. Maybe you don't show up if you don't like crawfish. Yeah, that's what I would say. <laughs> don't go to a crawfish festival. <laughs> do you have any steak? It's not a big <laughs> steak contest. It's crawfish. But anyway, they're, so I read about it yesterday, and every team is expected to cook, I want to say it said from one – one to seven sacks of crawfish, depending, I guess, on the crowd. You can't cook them all at the same time. They encourage you to have one batch ready at a certain time and the rest of them yeah. as needed. Yeah. 
but be prepared to cook. But you can hold crawfish, right? How long I, can you hold crawfish in a cooler? Man, I, you know, I've, I've held them several hours in yeah. a cooler. They hold, the, sometimes they get the better. They, used to, they sit in the too. crawfish. They just, they don't overcook. They just stay warm and juicy and soak up all those flavors. But I guess they just don't want to yeah. cook them if they don't have to. Yeah, yeah. But I, what would you do with them? If you got all these live crawfish, you ain't got no choice. It's not like they're going to keep a week. <laughs> you got to cook them, right? They Maybe should have sold waiting. them by the pound or something. <laughs> Maybe they're there. seeing uh, how many tickets they Who sell. Who cooks the best, and then that person's got to cook them oh, all. Oh, yeah. That's probably what it is. It's like how many tickets they sell based on the crowd. But the weather's going to be perfect, so I expect a big crowd. High. I want to walk around and try some crawfish, but I got to judge first. So you got to try 40 teams. Surely many? not. There's no way like you can try 40 different. I don't know. Is that what they're going to do? I don't know. I hadn't seen like, so as far as crawfish judging goes, I've, I've judged plenty of other meat contests, like yeah. barbecue steak, stuff like that. But I've never judged. I've, it's game. exotic. Yeah. yeah. But I've never judged a straight crawfish. So there, you can't. So the rule is crawfish only. You can't turn in. Potatoes, Potatoes, corn, corn, sausage, mushrooms, all the good stuff. It's just crawfish. You have to turn in enough for, I think it was seven or eight people to try. So that, to me, that means like a to-go box. Yeah. Because you're not, you only eating probably one or two, maybe. So if you have, yeah, if you have to judge 40 teams, you got to give them two, two to three crawfish. 80 crawfish, that's nothing. 80 crawfish. Yeah. Oh, I got that. Have you been taking your aunt ass? (laughs) No. (laughs) Your pet. It don't bother me like that. (laughs) <laughs> I can get down. I can. I'm, I'm good I've for four taking, pounds. I've been taking my. How many every pounds do you think four pounds is a crawfish? How many crawfish? That'd be um probably a couple hundred. I mean, they don't weigh much. I really don't know. I don't know. But it, I mean, it's just a little tail. It ain't like, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. See what gets me though. You can't, of the forty, it wouldn't take but one bad apple to ruin you. Yeah. Because you get one that's like super hot, blow your head off. I mean, you know, you can't judge fairly the others. So. Yeah. I'm expecting it to be just like anything else. They're gonna break it up. You About get half, yeah. You get so many fifteen tanks yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they might you might do half, so you might yeah. do twenty. But then there's there's gonna be probably half the field's gonna be average. You're gonna have you know a quarter of them that really suck, and you're gonna have a quarter of them that's pretty good, and you're gonna have to have a tough time picking between the the really good ones. That's what I expect. But yeah, that's how most of. I them hope are. to learn something, man. Learn what flavors. Really, I'm gonna whoever I'm judging with, I'm gonna be watching them and see what they like. That way, when I get ready to go down and cook a cook a crawfish contest, so this is a continent's mission. Oh no, this is yeah, this is definitely research. <laughs> this isn't just for me to go judge crawfish. I mean, it's really the best of both worlds. I love crawfish, and, and if we ever decide, yeah. yeah, I'd love to go cook a crawfish contest. Show up with your rigs and get the bowl and yeah, all day. man. Drinking beer and eating, and, and eat, passing eating out, and crawfish passing out. out. Cause so that's the second part of it. One part's the judging, and then there's a another category. It's people's choice, and so everybody that buys buys an entry into the festival is going to get some tickets. And the way those tickets work, you walk around and you try people's samples. They put them out in little boats. I'm sure. Now they can have whatever in them, but if you like them, you can give them a ticket. So it's like a vote. And so basically, whoever, whatever team there accumulates the most votes is the winner of the Crawfish Festival, the People's yeah. Choice. So, Crawfish King of Yeah, Hillary. yeah, the Crawfish <laughs> King. That's right. Man, I need to take, we have any Crawfish King shirts? Be a good time to take it down there and pass them out. King Crawl, you mean? Yeah, King Crawl. Nah, we got rid of all of them. Oh, do we? Um, anyway. But no, it's going to be fun. Yes. Yeah, and so that's only on Saturday, and it's like from two to eight. They're having a band. Yeah. Play two bands. I think there's one playing during the day and then one at night. But we're going down on Friday because we're going to go eat some char grilled oysters. Hopefully, <laughs> Dre goes. And then I've been told about this awesome Italian restaurant. Now, this is from my brother. You can't believe everything he tells you on restaurants. He's usually pretty good. <laughs> but he says this is the best steak at a restaurant that he has ever had at this Italian restaurant in Metairie. And I'd say that he goes to. They go to him and his wife, him, yeah, him They're, and my sister in law go to New Orleans quite a bit, several yeah. times a year. And they go down there because the food's great in New Orleans. And even they, everywhere they go and oh, yeah. go to the nicest restaurants. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that's try, kind of yeah. their thing. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. Food. So he's probably had some. He's had some good stuff. Pretty good stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And but this is the best. This is the best. And it's a metairie. It's what's it called? Rizzuto's or something like that? Or Italian? I think. He I think that's the name it. of it. It's, it's like something like that. Rizzuto's. I made a reservation. You had to have a reservation. 
It looks like it's in an older house that they've converted into a restaurant. And all the pasta that they serve is like handmade in the house. Um, the steak, what would you say? It's Rizzuto's Restaurante and Chop House. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and Chop House. So who, I'm looking forward to that. Like tablecloth. Yeah. I'm looking forward to going there. And that's the steak to order per Wayland is the Spinalis steak. Do you have their website pulled up? Dang it, I just closed it. Oh, um, that's all right. I was just He said they have a Spinalis steak, and it is the best. You know, the Spinalis on a ribeye is the best piece of the ribeye yeah, anyway. Yeah, that's what I go for first. And so I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know if they do it like Italian style, if this is like a char-grilled steak, they're going to serve it over pasta or with a sauce or what. But he says it just melts in your mouth. It's, it's got They me have a 10-ounce USDA prime Spinalis ribeye. Yeah. And then they have a 14-ounce prime Spinalis. Okay. I know what I'm about. <laughs> I don't know about you. But why would I order the 10 when they got four more ounces there? <laughs> Worst case scenario, I'm going to let me take the rest of it home. So up, up How's, What's the preparation? What does it say? Um, The Spinalis dorsi muscle, D-O-R-S-I. Dorsi. Dorsi? Yeah. What does that mean? Side. It's just like the proper name, Spinalis okay. dorsi. Okay. For that muscle. So the proper name is Spinalis dorsi. Yeah. And I've been just calling it Spinalis. Yeah. Okay. I mean, nobody, you know, say the. Yeah. It's just nice to know. Dominus or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The anatomy of the bovine creature. <laughs> <laughs> the Spinalis dorsi muscle, decal steak, coulette, or ribeye cap is the smallest, most flavorful, most marbled, and tenderest part of the ribeye. That's I believe that, but I've never heard it called a coulotte. I thought coulotte was something else. It's C-A-L-O-T-T-E. Is that? Yeah, I don't know. I've heard a lot. Something like that. You know. A signature cut of risotto's restaurante and chop house. We offer both 10 and 14 ounce spinels cuts whenever the market permits. Uh, if I get down there and they don't have this steak, I'm just walking <laughs> out. We're going to put the menu down. <laughs> just disgusting. Knock over your glass of yeah, wine. Yeah, I didn't give a knock <laughs> Like a cat. <laughs> and walk uh, away. Yeah. Dang it. Come here just for that. <laughs> Can't hype me up. Tell me all about it. Then I'm sorry we're out today. Tomorrow we'll have them. They got some uh, accompaniments. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're going to have all kinds of good stuff. But that's yeah. the only thing I'm going for. Jumbo lump crab meat on top of a spinal steak. That's, that's, that's all what I'm about, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. At, so that's going to be my weekend. I'm so gonna missing before, out on Spring Fest where we originally started with this. <laughs> before this steak this weekend, what's the best steak you've ever had in a restaurant? Man, really? The best? God, I don't, that's hard to that's say. That's hard. You know, the first one pops in my mind is Kane Prime in that's, Nashville. That was in my The ribeye? Yeah. God, it was so good. And I don't. I mean, I'm sure it was just a prime ribeye. I don't remember ordering. It wasn't like bagu or anything. That was. That's the top. I usually have like a baseline. Like, where would I go if it's Tuesday night and I want a ribeye steak and I know what I'm getting? It's gonna come with a baked potato and a salad, something like that. Old school. Old school style. I mean, used to like. I don't know what it's like now, as I haven't been in years. But Texas Roadhouse was a chain <laughs> restaurant. I mean, for real. It was like Texas Roadhouse, it was good. Uh, Lone Star. Um, Texas Roadhouse was really good. Yeah, they had the a standard. Like you went in, you got their ribeye, you knew it was coming with their baked potato, and you're gonna get a salad. A that's base. That's baseline. A yeah. boot of beer and the chicken <laughs> cheese fries. You know. Yeah. And they had those rolls with the honey mustard or honey butter. Uh, I don't. Did remember. they have the honey butter? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. They had some good rolls. I remember that. Anyway, but that was like my baseline. Like, where'd you go for a decent steak? Fair price. Go to Texas Roadhouse. Well, I hadn't. You can't throw that out the window now because yeah. I don't know what those chains are like. But um, it's you know you're just looking for a quality piece of meat that's cooked the way you want it cooked. And so, I've tried steaks from all over. The next one that it probably jumps out at me is one of the best I ever had. It was Jack Benyon Steakhouse. Old. I don't even know if it's still a thing at Horseshoe Casino. But when I got old enough and had money to go to a, a fancier type place. We would go down to the, when the casinos were fairly new um, in Mississippi, and that was fine dining back in the day. Heck and you'd yeah. go there and you'd pay 50 bucks for, a, you know, the big porterhouse or whatever. And I thought that was – I still remember that steak. So it's – I guess it depends on where you get uh, impression from. Yeah. I, mean, I 
I think I can cook a better steak than all of them. Yeah. But out, you know, we're talking about. We've got an old standard here, right here, uh, you know, a couple counties down, the Como Steakhouse. That place has been in business for decades. I like the ambiance there. That's right. I like the smells there. There is a grill master cooking these steaks as you walk in. And you see them, I and mean, they've got two grills, and they're open air. I mean, they got a hood over them to get. Yeah. But you smell steaks, and the guy, and the guy sitting there cooking the meat to order, and he's, they've got some kind of marinade they. I don't think they marinate the steak. It's like a sauce. They brush on them as they cook them. It's like it's like Dale's. If you've ever had Dale's, but they use like Willingham seasoning on them, and it's a dang. It's a ribeye that I'll always remember that I like when I go there. And sometimes you get it, and it's man, that's as good as cane prime, the best rib I ever had. And sometimes I get it, and it's like man, it's grisly, too much fat or whatever. It's real hit, so, man. But you know what you're getting. You're getting a baked potato. <laughs> you're getting a salad. You're going to get some mushrooms and fried pickles. I mean, that's, and I love Como Steakhouse, but you better plan on getting there earlier. You're going to stay in a line for hours because to this day, that place is busy every night. Can't go on weekends. Don't, and don't bother. Do they take reservations? I think they take reservations for groups, not like small parties. Yeah. So they're kind of picky about it's it. It's like a first come, but you got Windy City Grill right down the door from it. Go get, go get your name on the list. Go down to Windy City and have your cold beverage and go back up and get your table. It's an event to go to Como. I go twice a year, beginning of deer season and end of deer season. That's when we usually go. And then if you want to go big stand, we'll go down there some. But it's 30 minutes from us, so it's not like it's in our backyard. But anyway. What's so your favorite? Uh, I don't know. Probably some that you've cooked at the house. Yeah, yeah. It's the best favorite, no my favorite. Uh, cane prine sticks out. Um, Emeralds. I don't remember steak. having like a steak there. Yeah, I had a good steak there. It was good. I don't think that was when I went with you. I mean, yeah. Um, I don't know. There's some good ones. You my thing is, if I ask, <laughs> if I ask, can y'all do rare plus? And they look at me like they don't know what they're talking about. I usually order something else. Yeah. Can I get the fish? <laughs> Can I, yeah. <laughs> the salmon. Let me try this pork chop. <laughs> hey, Como has a fire salmon if you never had that. So anyway, Spr- uh, South Haven Spring Fest. Yes, that's this weekend. <laughs> I mean, there's so many good things. We've got Palmer Home uh, is doing the mud bug bash. Tunica's got Crawfish Alley going. It's a busy weekend. South Haven's got Spring Fest. They're cramming it all into one weekend. So I hate that we're not going to get to go to all of them. But we're, you know, the Spring Fest is one. Man, I missed it last year because of COVID. They moved it to the fall. We still had something going on. Got st- I think we had um, Water Tower Festival. A class, I think. Yeah, we did a class that weekend. Oh, okay. Private, it was a private Palmer Home event. Would you say that South State <clears throat> Spring Fest is where you got your start? Yes, it, it, in fact it is. And I, South Ham Spring Fest originally started as um, – a birthday celebration for the city of South Haven, where I'm from. And they, I guess they were, um, every year in the spring, it was like a carnival, music, barbecue contest, all this stuff for families. It was a family, it's a family event. And then um, a lot of people used it as a tune-up for Memphis and May, the world championship. It was the last contest on the schedule Cause Spring Fest, back in the day. Springfest is in Mississippi, but technically its city line touches the Memphis state yeah, line. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's right on it. I mean, yeah. It's a suburb, kind of. It is a suburb of Memphis. But uh, people used it. All these big teams used it as tune-ups for Memphis and May because it's only like a week or two apart from Lodian. So you go cook Springfest, fine-tune all your recipes, and – then go to Memphis and May and try to win the whole thing. But they treated Sp- Spring Fest as a mini Memphis and May event timeline. And with that being said, they had the Wednesday night. You know, you had your cooks meeting the week before. You had load in on like Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday was friends and family night. You were set up, already cooking something. Thursday was the big party night, just like it is at Memphis and May. Friday was ancillaries and another party night. <laughs> and Saturday was the con. So it was a yeah. week-long thing. I mean, it felt like a spring celebration for South Haven. And growing up, we just went to it. Like We were always going on Wednesday because you had carnival. I mean, we'd go ride carnival rides and play all the games. Yeah. And, you know, our parents would go to their friends' booths and stuff. But we didn't have teams back then. I didn't know anything about competition barbecue. But when we got older, we that's how, you know, Killer Hogs, uh, my buddy's dad had the team originally. This has been years and years ago. 
he was like, you boys want to come learn to cook barbecue? And we was like, heck yeah. You know, we were old enough and chasing girls and have, you know, party. <laughs> it was fun. And that's what got us hooked to it. So this was like before we didn't have power. We didn't have running water. And they didn't, it was just a field where people set up tents and did their thing. And then since then they've moved it and they've added infrastructure. And it was always uh, a fun, fun contest. And that's why I hate I'm missing it really. It was always fun. That's how that's where I, I met. I mean, the first contest you ever went to was Spring Fest. It was, and we went through some muddy Spring Fest too. I'm talking like where you're knee deep mud the whole time, waters over your trailer tires, and it's been bad. I mean, it looked like wood pictures of Woodstock where you see people covered in mud. And <laughs> we were just out there partying right in the middle of it. I love it. But. I remember the first time I went to it. It was a barbecue contest, and it's Spring Fest, and it's pretty big, but it's not so big. It's like yeah, I mean, when like I say, Memphis and May's almost too big. You got a we're talking 50, 60 and, teams. Yeah, yeah, but you still got like you got Myron Mixon out there cooking. All, all you've the got big Melissa, Melissa Cookson. Yeah. You've got you know all the big names yeah. are out there yeah. cooking, but you still have this cool party vibe. So to me, Spring Fest was a, a back in the day was really cool, and I remember being out there my first one and looking out and being like, "This is awesome." It's like a big tailgate <laughs> that's you know not associated with the game or something. I was like, there's a business here somewhere. <laughs> Doing this for a living. <laughs> it wasn't in competition barbecue. I didn't know that. At the time, but I <laughs> yeah, thought it, it was. It takes a lot to do that. <laughs> I mean, we raised money and did butt cooks and oh yeah, had crawfish con you know not contest but crawfish fundraisers uh, yeah. and things like that just to be able to do like Spring Fest in Memphis and May. Yeah, that's where you spent your money. But you know, you're out there for so many days and kegs of beer and food and all the good stuff that goes with it. Do you think that um, Spring Fest kind of uh, spurred a lot of these world champions that live around here? Oh, I mean, for DeSoto County, there's probably more world champions in, like per, per capita in one centralized <laughs> area. A lot of it was because of Spring Fest. That's where, I mean, that's where they cut your teeth. And I yeah. think that's why you had to, you've got all these teams that got better and worked their way up um, was because – if you wanted to beat these guys, you had to learn to cook and you had to learn what they were doing. And you had to figure it out. And I'm sure there was some, you know, shigging going on. You're trying to copy <laughs> a lot of what they're doing. You you know, you try to pick up here and there. You ask questions, all the stuff that we all did. And that's how he got that way. Yeah. And it was like every year we wanted to get better and better and better. And it didn't start out. No, Nobody starts out like in the pro ranks. I mean, I guess you could, but man, you're going to get your teeth kicked in. <laughs> We started out in the backyard divisions, and that was what was cool about it. Like, Memphis and May sanctioned contest had a pat, they called it a patio or a backyard division. And this was for your amateur people that just wanted to come out and cook, but they weren't quite ready to do all the on site stuff, all the decorate. And you didn't have to have a big team. All you had to do was, you know, show up with your grill and turn in yeah. a blind box. And so we, you know, that was for us. And we did that until we did really well at Memphis and May and won the patio division at Memphis and May the first year we cooked it and then after that you had to turn pro but then we kind of fell in love with the kcbs style which was all blind but you had to add the chicken and the brisket and so that was a starting point for us and south there wasn't that many kcbs contests around but then kcbs and spring fest was one of the i don't know if they were the first but they were one of one of the originals first that that had nba style contest which is the memphis ma you know, three meets and the KCBS at the same time. And so it started drawing even more people. And that's where it's at today. That's, I think there's a state, the SEA is part of it. I, I, is there not? I okay. don't think so. They did one year where you did they? Couldn't. Yeah. I, I don't know if they are now, but I mean, I know. So Mike Mills is Mike and Amy's contest up there at Murfreesboro does all three. They do. Yeah. So, and they were one of the ones that, I mean, I don't know. If, I think Springfest may have done a double before. A true double at the same time. Yeah. But Tupelo may have done Galax one time it. too. Galax does now. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of them. The people that had the MBN <clears throat> ties. Because back in the day yeah. when I first, when we first started doing it, Memphis and May actually sanctioned yes, Spring Fest. They were. And they had them all over the, well, they had, I would several. say in the South and up the East Coast. And that was pretty yeah. primarily where they were. Um, you know, Georgia. it wasn't near as big as KCBS. It never was as far as, the amount of contests and how they're spread out, but they were huge contests. I mean, the ones they had, and they were all based on Memphis and May being the world championship pork cooking contest. And so, hog shoulder ribs. Those are three categories. That was it. Yeah. 
And so what happened, They, I guess Memphis and May decided they weren't going to sanction anymore. They were just going to concentrate on Memphis and May. And so a group got together and said, we want to keep this whole network going. And they changed it to the Memphis Barbecue Network. And that's how it still exists today. It's the MBN. And so they still sanction contests, and they're – there's a good bit of them. They've changed formats a little bit, you know, just to keep up with the times and try to make it you more know, affordable. Yeah, more affordable and to attract more people. Back in the but, heyday, back when it was really like something. Yeah. <laughs> How much would it cost <clears throat> to do an NBN, a full NBN contest? Oh, you had to decorate. Way over a thousand dollars. Just buy. and this was like twenty years ago. Yeah. You were buying hogs, shoulders, yeah. ribs, ribs, all the decorations, everything that went to it. Most of the time, they're, they're multiple day events, so you had to do mm-hmm. lodging. If they're, you know, most it's only going to be a couple close to you that you can drive and actually stay at. Or, but back then, I mean, a lot of us camped out. We stayed out there all <laughs> yeah. night. We didn't get a hotel room. <laughs> but that's how it was. I mean, so that was one one reason why we started doing KCBS is because we could do two or three KCBS contests, even though we were buying a brisket and you know and chicken, and st- but you just weren't buying as much pork, and it was just cheaper. The entry fees were yeah. cheaper. Uh, there were one dayers a lot of times. You didn't have to stay all night. I mean, so that's that's kind of what got us doing the no KCBS. decorations. No yeah, you didn't have to worry about up, that. Yeah. What all that aspect of it, you could just you know cook your meat, pack up, go on, get ready to do the next one. So when we MBNs come- or Memphis and May styles, they're hard to do back to back to back. And I know some people have done them. I've done a few, but man, you talk about going from one weekend to the next, and it taking you you know two or three days you to get your crew. things ready. Yeah, it's a it's, it's a, not a small team that's operation. Right, that's right. When we talk about decorations. And setting up and things like that. What are you talking about there? Oh, I mean, it could be anything. We're talking no, flowers talking like and <laughs> banners and <laughs> china tablecloths. and tablecloths yeah. and chandeliers. Some people do. And I mean, just whatever what you, you can imagine for? for the on site aspect of the judging because people come to your booth and you're judged. I mean, that's the first criteria area and personal appearance. Judges actually come yeah. to your booth and you have to give a presentation. Yeah, and so it just. It, just like everything else, it's escalated. I mean, I'm sure it didn't start out that way. They just it probably meant to. Oh, did they clean up? You know, is there bone, rib bones laying around? Or cigarette butts and beer cans everywhere? Or do they make an area to make it to where somewhere it looks nice and neat? Like think of going in a restaurant, you want it to look presentable. But it turned into just like brisket cooking did in KCBS. Used to everybody cooked a choice of brisket, whatever you get at Walmart. Now you're spending two hundred fifty dollars on this wagyu. Well, MBN did the same thing with their decorating and all that, and it just escalated to a point where it makes it hard for the little guy. Unless you're you know, one of the people that are grinding it out, doing it every day, racing points, all this stuff, and you didn't have very many people doing that. Yeah, Most of these contests are community-driven to where people might not cook but one a year. There's a lot of teams of these contests you go to didn't cook, but that was their contest they cooked. And so you keep them from doing it by adding all the showy stuff. I mean, I like the showy stuff. It's fun. But, man, it gets to be some work. I ain't going to lie. I mean, the, really, the only one we really do is Memphis and May that's like that now. You did gay last, um, last year. Yeah, we did. But, but see, they've changed the rules. So you don't you can't decorate and do all that stuff now. It's it's not they on your fine china that you bring out. Yeah, little. they kind of did. They took out the first round of on-site judging. And so you only have finals judging at the end. And – now, when they tell them to judge, it's like, is it neat and clean? It's not based on, you know, how much you spent on ficus trees <laughs> that you brought out there. I mean, for real, you know? I mean. I remember us traveling around, and we were trying to do it without a trailer. Yeah. So we crammed everything into the back of your truck and in the back seat of the truck. <laughs> had ficus trees. And I had a... I, I had to keep this plant in between my legs. <laughs> From here to Virginia. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> God, I hated that. But it worked. We'd get calls. <laughs> had those trees tied up there in the front of the tent. <laughs> Looked good, didn't it? <laughs> Looked real good. Looked real good. <laughs> We're fixing to do it again for Memphis and May. Yeah, it's coming up. Decorate it. With Memphis and May, you do still have the Load in is what, three weeks? Two weeks. Is it two weeks? Wow. Maybe so, yeah. yeah. Man. Um, but yeah, so that's so I, do I weekend. miss? You can tell I miss. I, I, I do. I wish I was going to Spring Fest, and I wish everybody out there good luck. Uh, Mark, I hope he does great. He's got Jay Craig coming down from Outlaw, and they're gonna they're gonna run the big pit, the BFO, and fill it up with ribs, and, and run our Memphis May recipe or tweak on it, see what needs to be done. Hopefully, make finals and get to talk to the judges. 
I think Waylon is going to Spring Fest. Oh, cool. Um, there. back in the day, it used to be a lot of fun. I miss the all that. Pre- like tonight would be like we wouldn't be there right now. I wouldn't be sitting here doing a podcast. I'd be at Spring Fest. What time is it? I don't know. It's probably Bloody Mary time. It'd be but all the meat would be on for tonight. It'd be, it'd be beer be getting cold. Okay, let's, let's pack it up. Let's, let's screw it. Let's go. <laughs> Let's, I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. Multiple kegs. <laughs> I'm out. I'm going to show up. Jaeger machines. Pick me up tomorrow. <laughs> Do you remember when we had that? Yes, Jager there machine? was a three bottle one. <laughs> the problem with it is it got everything sticky. sticky. Oh man, it we, was horrible. That and the ice luge. The ice luge. We did have better ice luge. Ice luge. And you used to firing do, shots down the ice luge. When I first started coming around, y'all did these strawberry shots. Yes. <laughs> Soaked strawberry, that? cored out strawberries and soaked them in, in a big igloo jug of vodka and topped them with uh, amaretto and uh, whipped cream. And y'all had a chair at the bar where girls were supposed to like sit down. Backwards. Though, back, kind of, yeah, yeah, lean face, back. And then lean back and y'all would drop them strawberry shots. They there. loved it. They <laughs> loved it. Three days of that. And you probably never want to see a strawberry again. <laughs> They got everything. I wonder if those too. are any good. It's been so long since I've tried one of those. I guess you Heck no, they weren't good then. Yeah, they were. Can you imagine you're just running, you're just running our hands down in there and fill <laughs> That's COVID you, police would have got us big time. You never yeah. would do the ice luge because you Heck no, I wouldn't put my mouth on that and draw the people put up there. We were sending carnival goldfish down it, letting people swallow whole goldfish. <laughs> yeah, that's why you like this contest so much. It was it was buck wild. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what you were going to see. Thinking back on it, we had all these people, but like everybody was doing something during the day, but it was stuff like corn strawberries for the shots, you know, setting up the music, you know, like you it was to, nothing to do with barbecue. Yeah, no, it wasn't. <laughs> the barbecue part, Waylon came in and did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, back in the good old days. Because we were only cooking like ribs for backyard. We yeah. were doing all this. It wouldn't like show up Saturday morning. You would. We would do destroyed. all the ancillaries. Well, yeah. <laughs> Those on Friday on night, Friday. and we'd win a few every now and then. Heck yeah, I won chicken there every year. I cooked it, I think. <laughs> burnt, ch- burnt chicken thighs. That's what I would do. I would do them up. They loved them. Um. So anyway, uh, back to the real world. <laughs> Talk about yeah. <laughs> the community. You checked out the community lately? Yes. Have you seen that? Um, it's like a combine. Like a, I did see a, that a, a tractor combine, <laughs> and they turned it into a hog roaster. Did you see that? I did. I, I don't know if it was those pigs or those goats or what. I think they, they had them pigs. wired to it, wired to the front end of the picker, and they had coals like in the bottom part. It's like a the bucket part. I don't even. I don't know what a you know the makings of a combine or whatever that was. <laughs> but they had these coals they'd shoveled under it, and the thing would spin like this is a rotisserie grill to the next level. I think I counted nine hogs. Is that what it was? Yeah. Nine hogs. Wow. That's a lot of meat. Yeah. You can feed some folks with that. I mean, I think it would work. Is there a rule? Why wouldn't it? Is there a rule about how far away from your fire your meat can spin? Uh, uh, not that I know of. Okay. As long as, I mean, you just don't want it to sit over it too long. Well, I was thinking if it's not touching the fire, but, you know, every so often it's not really heating. I don't know. I don't know. Don't get me lying on that. I know. So those. You see them cooking, is it asado or where they they have the iron, like the cross? It looks like yeah, a rebar yeah. cross and they splay like them out. Cook them right. And they're, they build a fire in the center and they're around it and you turn them. It does. I mean, you've been ne- next to one of those and things. They t- it gets super hot. Yeah, and they taste really yeah, good. I've had yeah, the meat off, yeah. off of some of that. Well, I, I guess, I mean, just looking at it, it's like, ah, that meat may not be done <laughs> or in the safe zone long enough or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. That's, I mean, I'll stick with my. Oh, hickory pit for that, or but it, it, it was cool. That's a it is meat. cool. It's like an open rotisserie, basically. <clears throat> and you wire up the meat inside it, yeah, to the spindle, and it's just spinning over hot coals. I don't think they were like <clears throat> 200 pounder hogs, they looked, uh, yeah, they look they're probably, more 100 pounders, yeah, I would say so, 75, yeah. 100. Um. So I had a, It'd be a lot of weight if you put <laughs> nine big 150 pound hogs on. I one. didn't even think about that part yeah. of it. Looked like they had it figured out. It looked like a pretty good operation. Yeah. You want to know what the best thing I've seen in the community has been lately? What? This Hasselback sausage slider with a white barbecue sauce slaw. I don't know. I I didn't look and see what the name of the, the person that posted it was, but I made a note. I was like, I am doing that. 
Because I've, you know, I've been hassled back in sausage. That's my favorite way to do Like we're doing a sausage and cheese plate. You hassle back them to where you get more surface area of the sausage. It cooks better. You can get more rub down in there. It's not as greasy because it lets out it lets out a lot of that fat that's rendering. And then when you sauce it, it comes back and puts a, like a little bark on it. Man, I know it on a slider, a little, a little quarter of that sausage would be just delicious. So did they leave it hassle back? Like yeah. Like you still got some. Yeah, you should. If you hadn't saw that one, you need to check that one out. And then they made a white good. barbecue sauce slaw. It, for the mayonnaise element. Just I take like a that. bag of, I mean, I imagine they just took a bag of coleslaw and just tossed it with some of the white sauce and let it sit a little while. That is one thing I haven't done. Because it's vinegary. It's yeah. creamy. It's got a little sweetness, but it has a little heat and you get a little citrus from the lemon in it. I mean, it makes a, it's really a great idea to make coleslaw with it. I've never used that to make coleslaw. Yeah. That's a good idea. I'm going to do that. I've used it for pizza sauce. Yeah. It makes a really good pizza sauce. If you're doing grilled chicken pizzas or something like that, we're going to do a white sauce element. It makes a really good pizza sauce. You can add a little Parmesan cheese to it to give it a little more thickness. Spread it out. I like it on pork. I, I like too. white I barbecue too. sauce on pork. It a makes lot. it. I mean, you put. I put mayonnaise you on put my pork. You put mayonnaise pulled pork sandwich anyway. That's a little weird, but. It's not weird. It's, you put salt uh, on it. See, that's what, and you, you saw, that's what sold me on it. <laughs> when you said you put coleslaw in your sandwich, don't you? And I'm like, yeah, and it's mayo. Why would mayo not be good on a pulled pork sandwich? So I started, you know, I've done it myself. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. The white sauce, great. I like the white sauce better than the mayo on it, though. But I like slaw. I, I like a creamy I slaw on a pulled like pork sandwich. Yeah. It goes with it. So. Um, it really does. Somebody asked, what are some must-have accessories for the Weber? If you got the Weber or a Weber or a grill, this is, this ain't just for a Weber, but if you got the Weber kettle, you got to get you the Vortex. I talked about it earlier that I did my next YouTube video with it. It's a, it's, I say you got to get you one if you like cooking chicken because I haven't found anything on a Weber to you get the skin. You used it for a pork I've butt. used it. You can use it different kinds of ways. Like you can turn it, invert it, yeah, and it kind of creates the indirect to snake the coals around and you cook right over it. I mean, I've cooked a bunch of stuff on it, and it does really good, but it shines on chicken, um, you know, specifically chicken pieces, uh, you know, where they cut up wings or leg quarters or just individual pieces of chicken where you want to get the skin really good and you need some heat that's not direct heat because it kind of radiates with the shape of the kettle. Now, you can use those vortexes and other grills, but I just think the best the best one is the Weber kettle. Now, these other accessories aren't necessarily for the Weber kettle. Grill grates. The grill grates, they make them for any grill. you got to have your set for a Weber. I've got one from a Weber. I've got one from pellet grills. I've got, you know, PK grills. I've got a set. The, the Weber one works in eggs. I mean, so some of those are standard. It's like 22-inch grate on a kettle. So they make one that fits right inside that and, it, you know, any kind of round grill. But you need a set of those. I mean, the grill grates are great. It's one of the best accessories I think you can get for a grill. If you like to grill, you know, and smoke, it's great for it. You also like a hinge. Um, you're, you're... Yes and no. I wish. So I've got this new Weber, and I've had it. What did you buy it for me a year or two ago? It's been a couple years now. It's been a while. And it came hinged. It was like the new gold version or whatever it was of a I forget master it's called master built one touch version. or something yeah yeah but anyway and it has a hinge that stays on it and I'm not crazy about it I honestly can say because I like to cook in a vortex and I like to be able to rotate my dome they moved the um, the outlet vent you know the exhaust to dead center or it, it's in a fixed position on mine now and so it has to stay that way. I can't, like, and since it's hinged, I can't undo the hinge. Now, I had the old hinge that we got from Unknown Barbecue, and I just put on, like, aftermarket hinge on a Weber kettle. That one was great because you could pull the pin, and it still let me rotate my dial to where my exhaust vents could be. I like running them kind of in a clockwise, you know, turn yeah. them every 15 minutes position just to get even yeah. heat flowing through it. Yeah. This one, it just goes one way. So I kind of have to watch, like, anything to the back where that vent is gets hotter when I'm running my vortex. So if you'll notice when I cook, I try to, if I don't have it loaded down, I try to have it clear that area just because it's a little hotter. And then things get a little bit darker right there too. So you have to keep that in mind. But a hinge is okay. It keeps the lid on, you know. The uh, most important is probably a therm thermometer, thermopin, or dot. That's, I mean, I would say if you don't have, if you don't have, like you got a Weber grill, you're looking for something to buy, make sure you got you a good thermometer, Set of grill grates. 
chimney. And then a vortex. I mean, yeah. Everybody's Chim- got coals. a chimney. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chimney, that's true. But that's, that's my, I mean, and that's what most people's, if you look at the comments on that post on the community, that was most people's, and I just agreed with totally with that. That's yeah. that's what I would say, hundred percent. You get that? I'm gonna recommend I'm gonna recommend grill grates and a thermometer For to anybody. anybody that's cooking outside. You know, anybody that's cooking on a grill, you need those. The vortex is only I think they shine on a kettle style a round grill. I don't know if it'd do you any good to try to put one like in a PK or something that's square or rectangle or something like that. I don't know. I never tried it. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I never, I never had a reason. I got a Weber. Why would I run in any other place? You know? Um, so somebody else was asking about pork brisket. They weren't asking. They were showing. Oh, they were showing? Man, I had never had one. I mean, so we, I call pork brisket. Like sometimes we, when we cook whole shoulders, like back from MBN or Memphis and May contest, they would leave the way the brisket would cut. The way they would cut the shoulder off, it would leave some of that brisket meat on the on the skin side of that shoulder underneath. And that was always one of my selling points to a judge, busting that out and showing how it kind of was a little Mark down. Lambert trick. Yeah, yeah, I got it from Mark. Mark showed it to me. I was like, man, you know what? That's, that's dang good. It's a lot of times it's overlooked because it's on the bottom side, but you leave it there and you pull that back, and it's just all this brisket meat that's up in there he would call kind it like of, a flower or something yeah or? because when you when you squeeze it it kind of opened up a little bit yeah but that's what it is so this what they're cooking and i know um fergalicious richard fergola he's he uh <clears throat> he had some he was i forget who he's getting them from i don't know if it was prairie fresh or it was one of the meat distributors where before covid were packing them and you could buy pork brisket and he done i think he'd done some videos or done some classes with him and i'd con you know i'd ask him about him he's like man i'll come to, we're, gonna, we're gonna do a video on it but then the last when he did came and did the burn in video i asked him about those brisket he said man I can't get them anymore they quit packing them because what? they had such a they were having trouble with employees in the meat packing industry and so they were only concentrating on ones that were popular and selling hopefully they'll come back and we'll start seeing them i don't know where this person i need that i should have commented on there asking where they sourced that how much weight is a pork brisket? Like if you were, oh, I to imagine find it's it, only like about the size of a tri tip or something. Okay, you know, yeah. three pounds would be what I would guess or something like. That. It's a smaller roast, you know. Would you break it all the way down? No, you just trim it up some. I mean, there ain't. I mean, no, I mean, uh, like take it to table. Yeah, yeah, you cook it. Yeah. Just cook it like a. Yeah, I, that's what I would do with it. I mean, I guess you could take it a little if you wanted to slice it. You could take it. I don't know. I've never had it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I know when we cook it on the shoulder, we cook it all the way to it completely renders, and it's like shredded, really. It's almost like it's very stuchy. jowl where it yeah. has it's encapsulated in this fat. So when you render that, and it just turns into liquid, and it's so moist and juicy and all this. So that's that's really what I'm interested in trying it. But it looked like I want to, I think they cooked it till they could slice it, kind of. So I don't know. I'm intrigued. I definitely want to try one. So we anybody know. knows where to get those from. Hit up a message on the community there and let us know where you can source that. That was why I made a note and told you about it. I was like, we need to talk about that. <laughs> so you can let everybody know you're on the lookout? No, I mean, I'm sure other people had that question, too. Yeah. Where do you get those? They don't have them at Kroger or Sam's that I know of. So it is technic- so it is a pork brisket. Yeah, it comes from, like, the chest, chest area on a hog, I imagine, is where they're getting it from. I mean, it kind of rounds out. You know, when the shoulder's sitting there, it kind of that meat wraps up around, kind of. Well, I guess you'd say the armpit area or yeah. whatever, and back to the chest. Some good. That's what it is. Right? So you, I mean, I imagine they're cutting like cutting it off some kind of way. Yeah. I don't know. I've never seen that. Bro- I've never seen it broke down like that. Because usually when we're getting them, they're split, so there'd have to be a piece on both sides. But yeah, that's that's how I guess they're cutting them off. I don't know. We need to get educated on that. Heck I'm yeah. all about learning. So and trying new and trying new, <laughs> new cuts. delicious new delicious cuts. Well, Malcolm, what do you have coming up? Um, Aside from come eating crawfish this weekend, yeah, that's judging crawfish. I've got we've got Cinco de Mayo margarita contest here at work. I'm gonna have to come up with some recipes for something new. When is Cinco de Mayo? That's not next week, is it? It's right before the Derby. Okay. We got the Derby Two coming weeks. up, yeah, yeah. So we got the Kentucky Derby. So that's, that's it'll be here. We got one more week, and we got to start load in this week, and then load in from Episode May. It's here, baby. It is here. It is. I pay, I That's my place. thing. As far as videos, I don't know what I'm doing there. I know <laughs> I've got this uh, lemon pepper chicken quarters coming out. 
that were fantastic. I'm, no joke. If don't slip on the chicken leg quarters, that's the I've under always, underrated piece of chicken. I've always been a big fan of chicken leg. Oh, quarters. me too. That's what we grew up when I was dirt poor and we were living in apartments with roommates in college. And we Thank had an old yeah. side burner on the on the porch. That's what we cook. You could go buy a bag. They were twenty nine cents a pound. <laughs> So they'd sell them in ten pound bags. You got three dollars in this, you know, bag of chicken leg quarters. Seized them up. We didn't know what we were doing. We were just putting whatever on them, flavor almond number five and wickers, throwing them <laughs> on the cooker and letting them go until they about fall apart. And eating them for dinner. I, was, I mean, it was. Grew up, we were ate a lot of chicken leg quarters. Yeah. But then the ultimate barbecue. When you think of chicken plate, barbecue chicken plate, most of the time it's a leg quarter, some slaw and some potato salad. I mean, or beans. Or beans. Yeah. yeah. But chicken leg quarters are where it's at. I love chicken leg quarters. I prefer the dark meat anyway. Yeah. Dark Especially meat's grilled. To me, oh, so dark meat smoked and grilled is awesome when it's hot and fresh. And I know why I pick because it, once it cools off, it's not near as good because it had a lot more fat in it and it's juicy, but it congeals back and it, it don't really reheat well. White meat chicken is great cold. Like I'll take a chicken breast, right? Like some of the. The, that I bill prep, I'll go eat just pieces of that out of the refrigerator. I would not do that to a leg quarter. Like, just go get one out of the refrigerator and try it. Why? It's just na- I don't know. I don't like it like that. But right <laughs> off the grill, where it's hot and juicy and jumping off the bone, oh, I don't get no better. Do you like cold, dark, dark meat chicken? I ain't got no problem with yeah, it. You got no problem with it? <laughs> a little greasy. <laughs> That's probably why I like it. <laughs> Dipping into that white barbecue yeah. sauce. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Well, that's what that's what I got. I mean, I'm sure we got some more videos coming out. Um, I've got a list of TikToks I need to do. I've been wanting to work on a a dessert, a grilled strawberry shortcake, some kind of. Way. I like that idea a lot. While it's strawberry season, yeah, I like that idea a lot. Let's do that. We did recently but, did the overnight pork butt, and that's I mean that's a no brainer. If you're not, if you got a pellet grill and you're not cooking overnight pork butt, man, you need to jump on that. It's too easy. Just set it and forget it. Don't let it run out of pellets and don't let the power go off. That's the two things. Don't that's let all, it run that's out the only thing. Pellets. That's the only way you can mess them up. I've ran let, out of pellets before. If you let it run out of pellets or the power goes off, you're screwed. But other than that, you can't mess it up unless you take it off too soon. Just until you pull that bone out, and you can, you know you can wiggle it while it's right there on the grill. And you don't no, have to leave it at the yeah. bottom. Just go keep pulling that bone until it slides out. <laughs> then scoop it off. <laughs> then it's done. But it's the easiest way to cook a pork butt. There's no guesswork. I mean, that's where pellet grill shines is where you ain't got to do nothing to it. I mean, and it tastes good because you keep the temps low. And I, heard, it, I mean, I heard somebody in the shop talking to you the other day. You said something about pellet grills. He goes, they make no fun. Yeah, they, I mean, <laughs> now, for purists, they're not. It is no fun to set a temperature and just leave it. It's not like you're outside hanging out, cooking, doing anything to yeah. it. If you want that full effect, get you a stick burner. Get you something that you got to add fire to and manage the vents. Get and you all a Santa that. Maria. Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> for real. I mean, I mean that's that's fun to me. <laughs> yeah, it is. But if I don't want to think about it, I'm going to I'm gonna throw it on the pellet grill and not worry about it. I just want something to eat the next day and go out to dinner and go to bed, whatever you want to do. You don't have to worry about it. And they got them now where you can watch the apps on your phone and see what the grill's doing. And then if you start getting low on pellets, it'll tell you. Well, they got all kinds of stuff for them. Yeah. I don't become, use that. Yeah, they become super <clears throat> Usually I know. Like, I'm filling up with pellets. It's, I'm good for 12 hours. Yeah. Whatever. At certain, whatever temp you're running. But whatever. some of the uh, other pellet grills don't have that size hopper. Yeah. Or they utilize, you know, pellets at a higher speed. Anyway. That's right. But, yeah, that's what I got coming up. What about you? You got anything coming up? <laughs> Just taking care of you. That's right. <laughs> Keeping me in line. That's all right. Well, you uh, may come get me at Spring Fest tomorrow. I'll just stay out there. Tonight. <laughs> pick you you got up. a place I can crash. <laughs> pick you up on the way to come Mary. in hot to come in hot to the crawfish festival. <laughs> I have so, seen you do stuff like that many times, but I just don't think you got it in you anymore. Oh, that's my younger days. Hate to say it, but I gotta save something for Memphis and May. It's too close. <laughs> well, if you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's how to BBQ, right? On Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, and of course YouTube. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell on Instagram and TikTok. 
I don't really do much. But, <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, y'all check out the community, man. We enjoy yeah, seeing all yes. the posts on there and sharing information. And if you got um, a lead on a hot pork brisket, yeah, let, yeah, us know. let us know. And if you're down in Metairie this weekend, come check out the Crawfish Festival at the, what was it? St. Catharines of Siena. Is that what it was? I think I'm terrible with remembering names, but that's where it's at. St. Catherine of Siena. That's where it will be. Just go to Metairie and follow your nose <laughs> when you smell the crawfish. All right. Well, I hope everybody has a great weekend. Appreciate y'all hanging out with us and listening this week. And we will be back next week talking more delicious <laughs> stuff. We gone. <laughs>